Hello and welcome to In the Envelope, an awards podcast. I am your host, Jack Smart, awards editor at Backstage, the most trusted name in casting. I'm here to spotlight some of the most exciting film, television, and theater awards contenders working today. Who is in the running? What makes an awards-worthy performance? And how can you, my dear listener, win a statue of your own? We're sitting down for intimate, inspirational interviews with actors and artists to get that insider's perspective on these questions and more. It's an opportunity for some of today's most talented stars to share their craft and career advice, and maybe, just maybe, provide a tantalizing glimpse in the envelope. Jamie, where are we? We're where in the middle of nowhere. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> We're next to a forest. I'm, I'm in a forest. Yeah, it's like in a, a beautiful little... studio in a forest. Yeah, this on the outskirts of Philly, just north of Philly, I have a studio. <laughs> yeah, where what's I it called? Get up to, it's called Albion. Just, it's not a commercial studio. Tentatively? It's my own place. Okay. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. That's what we refer to it as. Albion, Albion is like an old English word for England. Mm-hmm. Hence, why I've called it that. This feels new. Like, it feels like it's fitting that I'm here for this round of interviews. Yeah. Uh, for what is essentially a season two yeah. of In the Envelope. Round two of the award season. Round two of award. Exactly. So we, happy one year anniversary of this podcast, Yeah. first of all. Jamie and I, along with mem- many members of the team at Backstage, sat down a little over a year ago to kind of concoct this project. Mm. And we've now covered a season, essentially, an award season of Emmys, Oscars and SAG Awards, and then Tonys, which is what we just aired. Yep. And now here we are with another round of episodes for Emmys 2018. Yeah. And Emmys is where we kicked where this, everything off and yeah. the enthusiasm started around Emmys. So Totally. There's no shortage of Emmy contenders to choose right. from. And as we were talking about earlier, they are thrilled to talk to Backstage because here we are, we're the actor's trade publication. We're here to provide actors resources on how to be a performer or be an artist. Well, I think they feel like they're giving back a little because they, yeah. many of whom have used backstage in the past to get sure. where they are now. That always makes me feel very proud yeah. when that happens. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Great people. Though whether or not you watch the TV shows in question, I do think there's, there's the great thing about advice like this there's a lot of stuff on craft. There's a lot of stuff on like the career, more practical, more business, business side of things. Mm. You can pick and choose what works for you. Right. Maybe you, listener, maybe you are at the very beginning of your career, or maybe you're thinking about becoming an actor and you want to know where to get started. And you think, oh, backstage, what a great resource. Oh, they have this podcast. Oh, I can listen to that right. for free too. Exactly. Or maybe you're an established actor and you're an Emmy contender yourself. I think there's plenty in these interviews for that as well. There's a lot that you can take out of it, even if you're not looking to get into film TV. For myself, exactly. I'm a voice actor. Mm-hmm. I've taken a huge amount of psychological craft, mm. business advice philosophical. from philosophical, mm-hmm. the, whole, the whole gamut. Totally. Um, and uh, it's from people who are at the top of their game, yeah. you know? Yeah. And there's a lot of advice in the world that you have to really <laughs> pick is. and choose where it comes from. <laughs> That's and, true. You know, right, right. And it's it's a cool thing to get to sit there and listen to like, well, this person's path doesn't resemble mine at all. And yet that thing that they just said about hmm, like how they interact with another person on camera, that's yeah. actually great life advice. Yeah. It doubles as great life advice. Yeah. Even just this next round of interviews alone, I'm sitting here looking at this list. It's like. Well, this is an opportune time to talk about today's episode. <gasps> yes. Because this is a fine example of all that we've just been saying. Yeah. We had to pick for our season two premiere guests the two leads of one of TV's biggest dramas, TV's biggest, most watched drama, Mm -hmm. which is NBC's This Is Us, the family drama from Dan Vogelman. Uh, Again, if you haven't seen This Is Us, there aren't a lot of people out there who haven't seen This Is Us. It's that popular. Millions of Americans are tuning in every week to basically cry their eyes out. But I do think that our interviews with first Mandy Moore... And then Milo Ventimiglia are an example of that idea of like, even, even when they're talking specifically about the show, yeah, it's, it's great life advice. Definitely. I told my, I straight up said to Milo, he should write a book. He should yeah. be an acting teacher. <laughs> and Mandy was one of the most delightful people I've ever met. Yeah. It was amazing. 
I we actually recorded these back in um, in February, and it was just after their big Super Bowl episode, right? Which is important to mention because we do go into a little bit of the plot details there. This so, is the show n- not about the Super Bowl. This is a show that right. aired right after the Super. Bowl. And it is funny they both refer to it as the Super Bowl <laughs> yeah. episode. Yeah, which is a little misleading because, like, what you should know if you've truly never seen this is us. Uh, spoiler alert: It's literally in the second episode of the show. But Jack Pearson, who Milo Ventimiglia plays, is the patriarch of the family. He does die. Yeah. The show takes place over multiple timelines, and so Mandy Moore is actually playing an older version of her character in the in the current day. And um, the Super Bowl episode, quote unquote, was the episode that finally revealed how he died. Yeah. And fans were clamoring to figure out how this happened, and the way that the show handled it was so beautifully. Beautifully done, especially, I think, Mandy Moore's performance. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, and you said she was almost a little apologetic because she's obviously known as this. She started out as a singer. She started as a pop star. So yeah. now she's a very... I know. I was having none of it. I was yeah. having none of it. I was like, you, you're a professional actor. You just They both just won a SAG Award. They won the SAG Award for Ensemble Drama Acting yeah. in 2018. But she's trying to be like, oh, no, I don't know what I'm doing compared to all these other people. And she's like an expert level crier. She has to do it in every episode. She has so much emotional heavy lifting to do. Yeah. I actually really loved getting into the nitty gritty of how she gets into the mindset of doing that. Yeah. If you want to know how to cry and do it as well as Mandy Moore does, this is a great interview. She and really, this is I really also, grill her about yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. And learning how to behave on set how to behave with your crew and your co-stars. Yeah, especially Milo. Yeah. They talked about the responsibility of being the two, uh, num- number one and number two on the call sheet and what that yeah. means. They work to establish a family on screen, but also off screen. Yeah. Milo Ventimiglia makes a point of befriending every crew member. Um, and that's actually something that he learned from Will Smith. Like Will Smith was right. the person who set him on his path because his very fir- Milo's very first on-camera credit was in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, and he saw how great Will Smith was to everyone he was. If only we with. were in West Philadelphia, we're in North Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Ah, this doesn't feel like no. we're anywhere near Bel Air <laughs> no. in the middle of the woods. Right. God knows where. I don't know where you've taken me. Yeah. But I'm glad this is I'm, this is really exciting because it really feels like we're kicking off like this new. It's this. It's new in the sense that it's new, but it's also like these are the same Familiar. old interviews we've been yeah. doing. Yeah. Ever since this podcast was just like a twinkle in our eye. <laughs> <laughs> how um, far we've come. Look how far we've come. And I'm so excited for what's what's to come next. Definitely. This next round of guests is just... And, and if you're uh, the kind of person who likes to binge podcast episodes, be ready because we really are releasing three a week. Yeah, if you've got a, if you got a long flight weeks. coming up or if you've got a lot of commuting to do. <laughs> and you really want to know the steps of becoming a successful actor, yeah. here you go. Yep. You're welcome. Welcome to the envelope. <laughs> All right, we should get. We have two interviews coming up, so um, let's talk to Mandy Moore and Milo Ventimiglia. <laughs> Mandy Moore broke onto the scene at a young age, first garnering attention as a teenage pop musician. Prior to booking the lead role as Rebecca Pearson in Dan Fogelman's NBC family drama This Is Us, she was known for her work as an actor in A Walk to Remember, The Princess Diaries, and Tangled. Season 2 of This Is Us was one of the most watched series on TV, and its cast won the 2018 SAG Award for Ensemble Acting in a Drama. Here it is, our interview with Mandy Moore. Just won a SAG Award. Congratulations on your SAG Award win. Thank you. Thank you. That was huge. That was shocking. Pretty mind blowing for all of us. It's still crazy to walk home and see that sitting on the shelf. Uh, Like just the fact that we all were together because we're a Mm -hmm. really close knit cast. and we have such a large cast, too, that they didn't have tickets for everybody. So those of us, like, with plus ones, we, like, invited the rest of the people that weren't, oh. that are very much a part of our ensemble, but, gotcha. like, didn't have um, tickets to the seating. show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that was great. It's like we literally, oh. we were, were a large group, but we right. were all there together. So it was even That's more really cool. special, yeah. I mean, the, obviously, it it must be said that, this is a show where you sense that the cast is a family to the extent yeah. that a group of people who are not family can be family. That's what This Is Us is. Ah, oh, that's nice to hear. I mean, that's how we certainly feel. And it's, mm-hmm. yeah, it's always nice to hear that that's like palpable. That's coming through. Definitely. I mean, I definitely want to get into it of like 
the evolution of this show and like it was I think that chemistry was there from the very first episode and that seems really rare for any new show and you guys just kind of came out of the gate as this huge intense family drama that was also really believable but also did you know going into any of this that it would be such a big hit no way no No, it's still weird to sit here and talk about like we had our rap party the other day and Dan Fogelman gave this speech where he was like regaling everybody with numbers and is like and this is the largest (laughs) show on television like Ah. Game of Thrones has X amount of viewers and we have X amount and I'm just like wait 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 I like wanted to press (laughs) pause on the scene you don't have any dragons in your show exactly (laughs) I'm like we're just this tiny little network show with no budget and um but it's wow. it's i think we all knew how special the script is because mm-hmm. dan is phenomenal mm-hmm. at what he does and he wears his heart on his sleeve and he just knows how to tap into all of our emotions like he just it's it's mm. like the perfect weight of humor and mm-hmm. sadness and joy and it's this special concoction so i think we knew mm. from reading that first script mm-hmm. like whoa there's a whole world here to explore like mm-hmm. this i didn't expect that twist ending and right. to know that we were all family and we were all connected and mm. i feel like it's just gotten even better, like episode by episode. Like, oh yeah, well, I, yeah. I feel like we we all sort of knew what we were venturing into, but like, we, like, it's it's just gotten deeper, and I feel mm-hmm. like especially this season, because people so kindly embraced us early on, right. Um, it allowed us like a little bit more elbow room and freedom to go like, okay, so now you know these characters uh, and we're yeah. going to introduce like a little bit more damage here. Sure. And we're going to get a little darker and it's not going to be as like fun and maybe lighthearted mm. as season one was. Mm-hmm. But I think people were willing to like to go on that journey with us because right. of what we sort of set up in the first season. Yeah, I think there's something to be said for like having a devoted fan base and then you kind of have a choice of like, should you as a show try to get more fans or, like, deviate from the fan base in order to, like, lure other viewers? Or do you, like, honor these fans and, like, really, as you say, I hadn't thought of it in terms of, like, exposing the flaws of these characters more and being willing to do that, which is so Yeah, because I felt like the audience really trusted us. Because we did weird things in the first season. Like, we had a couple episodes that were just about, like, we had the finale that was just Milo and I, and then we had the 12th episode that was, like, the story of the day that these at the Big Three was born with, like, from our perspective and the fireman who found baby Randall and the doctor who delivered. So, like, Mm. we did weird things enough where I think we showed people, like, this show isn't exactly what you think it is. It's not moving linearly, like, at yeah. all. So right. I think we knew that we had them with us, and it gave yeah. it emboldened us to go, like, okay, so season two, like, here we go. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. There's, like, a trust in the audience. Thing. Yes. And a trust, too, that, like, the audience will go with you the bigger and more ambitious a show is. Yeah. I feel like that's when, like, it's almost like you're saying to the audience, I know you're going to come with us. We, yeah. We trust you to have... The same, like, and it's a high wire act, the yeah. show, mm-hmm. that it continues to be as emotional as it is. And the stakes somehow keep changing, but yeah. also keep kind of raising the stakes more and more, too. In a way. I mean, I feel like the stakes are high when it comes to, like, the revelation of, like, how Jack passes away. Yes. But the rest of the show, like... The stakes, they aren't as high, I guess. Like, there's not the same sort of expectation. But I feel like the nuance in that is way more fascinating and interesting. Mm. Like, the just the, the, the human condition mm-hmm. is, like, oh, like that's what gets me. Like, the, the day-to-day, like, ups and downs and triumphs and, mm. and defeats of, like, of real people and real families and relationships and what it takes to make it all work, like, that's far more fascinating to me than, like, answering one question of, like, and this is how he passed away. It's like, yeah, that's, right. that's, I get it. I get the fascination with that. Mm-hmm. But, like, this man is so much more than that. This family is so much more than that. Right. And I feel like there are, there are fundamentally, like, more interesting questions that the show will continue to answer, like, moving forward. Totally. Yeah. And it's almost like the the stakes are those no. It's a show built on the interpersonal relationships. Yes, and how it's they all about change. That. But also, it's it's dizzying because it's how they change over time, and it's so non nonlinear. Yeah. That do you ever get that thing where you're like, I'm reading the script, and I'm like, wait, I'm now in this era, <laughs> and last season we had an episode where I yeah. was doing this. Wait, yeah. What is my relationship with that character now? <laughs> <laughs> it's really. 
I mean, all the credit to our incredible writers because they just like yeah, they keep universe. us all on <laughs> like on point because it's all on the page. Mm-hmm. But it is overwhelming. Like we started filming in July, and you know this is what the end of February, and we just oh wrapped God. last week, and so we've been going that's, nonstop that whole time. So it's like one episode TV. just rolls into the other, to the other, to the you know it's network TV. So Damn. we do eighteen episodes, and we're not you know like some cool little ten episode like cable show. We yeah. have like the specific oh, window yeah. that we fit into. So it's an hour. It's an hour, and it's a huge ensemble. But um, mm. it's yeah, we're just constantly like. I think Milo and I more so than anybody else on the show because, mm-hmm. you know. Most of your scenes are. Well, most of our scenes are together, but also, like, we are really the ones that do the majority of the jumping around. You know, oh, the yeah. big three have their iterations and versions of themselves played by other actors. So That's true. Um, I think Milo and I have sort of developed, like, a shorthand at this point where, like, we mm. just can look at each other. Like, we know it's easy to, like, sink back into whatever era these characters right. are in because we have this, like, shared history together now at this point. We've done 36 episodes together. Right. So it's like, we got this. Like, yeah. I don't stress out about it. I, I stressed out about the Super Bowl episode. Like, I stressed out about, like, just the whole circumstances around his death because um. I felt like this tremendous sense of responsibility and pressure to, like, make sure to honor this moment. And I knew that it was, yeah. like— I knew a lot of people would be watching, and I knew a lot of people wanted to know the answers around right. this this event. So um, that was like working that out. Like felt a little bit dicier than you know, just like shooting a regular episode. Well, I would love to hear. I mean, that's sort of why I want to ask you these questions because I want to know what is challenging for you because you make it look easy. Oh, you're you, very sweet. I'm going to ask you about crying later. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> now you do it. But like, first of all, the filming from, what did you say, July to now? July to now, yeah. Is it, you, can you do anything else in your life? No. Really? <laughs> None of us have regular I lives. I believe that. It's I mean, so it long. is. This is the greatest job I've ever had and I know that it won't be around forever so I'm like, I am soaking in every moment. I'm not completely at all. But no. yeah, it's like it, we're busy. And I yeah. think just the nature of the show, too, there's so many of us and we all have mm. s- schedules to maintain. And, you know, we're lucky that like people watch the show. So like we're all mm-hmm. going off and like doing different press things and stuff. So yes. that makes it even trickier to schedule all of us. And we have a lot of kids that work on the show so they can only work <gasps> a set amount of oh, hours. Yeah. It's like the AD <sighs> department. Wow. must be out of their minds working That's on this true. as us because it's just so much to contend with. But um, yeah, it's just, it's, it, it is it is hard to have a life. It sounds like <laughs> doing a Broadway show. It sounds like the kind of like endurance of like... Oh, that scares me more than anything. Eight shows a week. Yeah, oh my God, right? you should do that next. Maybe one day. You should do that next. One day. You could do, you should, would you do a musical? Yes. I would love oh to. God, I would cast you in some, I want to cast you, you in so many different movie, musicals now. I'm trying to Oh my God, musicals. please do. Which would you want to do? Would you want to do like a classic or yes. you originate a role or would you want to do like a classic? I mean, I I would do anything. Like just a good <sighs> show, great music, like sign me up. And I'm dying it to do a musical. You, you should do it. It scares me. So like yeah. I definitely want to do Broadway at some point. Yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. You, heard it, you heard it here first, folks. You heard it here first. Um, <laughs> so the endurance. You are filming the show for months and months and months. You're reading all these scripts. Mm-hmm. Each, most of your episodes, most of everyone's episodes involve – these scenes of, of real intensity, mm-hmm. y- you can't possibly be that tapped into that emotion every single take of every single day of every single episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank goodness that it's not every single, like, scene. Yeah. I mean, there are definitely, like— uh, I mean, sometimes it's lighthearted and funny, which is Sometimes it's a little lighter, sure. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, s- but I think as an actor, like, what I sort of do to prepare is um, I don't overthink it. I don't, like, get in okay. my head about it. Mm-hmm. I don't stress myself out about it. I just sort of go, like, it's going to all unfold the way it's supposed to. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I guess I take, like, certain measures to make sure that, like, I'll wake up in the morning knowing that, like, I had to shoot the scene, let's say, in the um, hospital when the doctor tells me that Jack died. Oh, my gosh. And, yeah. uh And we had, like, and I had to then walk into the room and see his body. Like, that day, Mm. I remember I, like, woke up, and I knew that I had to do it. And I just was really quiet, and I kept to myself and, like, Mm. had my headphones in. And Mm. I think because of the nature of the show, the crew is incredibly, incredibly respectful that, like, Mm. we all have to cry or 
go to deeply darkly places sure. so the they're zone. very yeah. quiet and like very respectful and uh that's what i do that i just helps. listen to music and try and zone out and think about the script and put myself in those shoes and but yeah not like not stress out about it yeah i mean and you mentioned that episode was was the stressful one from the kind of fans perspective yeah but you must wake up the morning of having to do that one scene with like a, it's a responsibility. It's a lot of responsibility, yeah. and and I feel like that episode in particular, actually the two episodes, because we mm-hmm. shot them like right after one after another, of um, you know the Super Bowl episode and then the funeral episode, and mm-hmm. it was just like I my <laughs> emotional well being was at stake. No, <laughs> I felt so depleted emotionally because I really I was gr- crying every day, which is fine. I mean, that's my job, but <sighs> man, it was, I was like, I can't wait for the season to be over so I can like be happy <laughs> again yeah, yeah. <laughs> and laugh and find joy in things. But <laughs> yeah, that those were doozies. Those were, those yeah. two episodes like really were just, I feel like this season, there were a lot of tears from Rebecca. Do you think of it as, as, this is maybe silly, but do you think of it as courage, like you approaching those scenes? Like, do you think of yourself getting out of your own way and getting in the zone and and trying to nail those big moments? Do you think of that as like risk taking as a courageous actor? Or are you just doing it? Um, I mean, we have pretty cushy jobs. And not to say that mm. it's like super easy um, because I I am not some like trained actress. I I oh. <laughs> I'm just I'm not. So a lot of it is just instinct mm-hmm. and and I mean I've been doing this since I was 16, but I didn't know what I was doing when I started. I was te- terrible. I didn't know how to hit, how to hit a mark. You and not to terrible. say that I'm any better now. No, no, no. But I mean, but I really didn't know what I was doing, and I would never like. You didn't do the acting school. I route. didn't do the school, yeah. and I look at like you know the people that I work with, like Susan and Sterling, who. Like, sure. went to school yeah. and, like, went to NYU and, like, right. grad school. And, like, they're this is, like, they have all of the instruments and they are primed. And I hmm. I really, like, I envy that. I envy that experience and what wow. that must have been like because I just didn't do any of it. I feel like the loser that just, like, no. kind of snuck in, like, through the cracks somehow. Yeah, but that's so much more a testament to but, what you do. Well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's just sort of like people just find different routes there. Right. But I don't feel courageous. I just feel like this is my job and I feel a responsibility to honor the great work that our crew does and honor the great work that our writers do. Like that yeah. to me, like I put that pressure on myself. Like I want to deliver gotcha. for them. Yeah. Like we're all in this together. I want to deliver for Milo. I want to deliver for like my scene partner. I want to deliver cool. like – so that's where I sort of put my pres- the pressure on myself. But it doesn't feel courageous. It's like, nope, this is – it's all been set up for for me. Like every mm-hmm. if everybody does their job, it like paves the way for me to do mine and mm-hmm. makes my job, you know, exponentially easier. Sure. So that's just what I try to do, show up and like do the work. Yeah. yeah. And when you're immersed and kind of working so closely with other people who are doing great work, it yeah. forces you to step up your oh, game as Oh, there's much as no possible. option. Yeah. And – Every single actor on the show is phenomenal, and it oh, yeah. makes everybody just bring their A game because, mm-hmm. like, you want to you want to play in that game with them. Like, yeah, we had a scene this season, which is maybe one of my all time favorite experiences, where we we're in a family therapy session, and mm-hmm. it was like a twelve page scene. It was like a twelve or a twelve minute take or something. Like, it was. Oh, wow. We did it all day mm. uh, because it was myself and Sterling and Chrissy and Justin and um, the therapist, Kate and um, Kate Burton. And it oh, was yeah. it was phenomenal, too. And uh, it was just so raw, this scene. Like, it makes me emotional to think about. Like, mm. it was so raw and real. And every single take, all of us were like, boom, we were there. We were in it. We were like, like a family that was fighting. And like, uh, uh, there were revelations. There yeah. were like, it, there was so that felt like there was so much at stake, um, just in the scene, just the nature of like what we were talking about that um, <laughs> was Oh, like delicious. It was such a fun challenge to be like, cool, we're all going to like be in this for six hours together, you know, like doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And after every take, it's like, all right, 
we're starting it was all like, that over again. Okay, let's like take a breath, shake it off, and like d- and again go. go for it again. And have those revelations. That's exciting. Yeah, to like find something new each time, and like to find the like to really find the tears, like to find well, not like the tears, but like to find the like the pain, the like raw, visceral pain of like mm. a child sort of really laying into you as a parent and Oof, like yeah. questioning. You know your your maternal like your love for them. It, mm-hmm. it just it was heavy. It, like I think for everybody, like the work you do, can't, you can't help but like harken back to your own childhood or like tap into things from mm. your own life. And it's wow, like its own therapy in a way. Yeah, yeah. A scene like that is there is <laughs> real therapy. Therapeutic. <laughs> the therapy Cathartic. scene is real therapy for uh, all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so intense. Um, can I ask about the music aspect of it? Like, what first of all, like, what kind of music are you listening to to get oh, into to that, get in? that zone? It's weird because I'll be driving and hear a song and go like, "Ooh, that like that hit something in me that m- like made me feel something." Uh-huh. Um, I feel like that's a good song to listen to when I need to sort of go to that place for mm-hmm. for work for a scene or something mm-hmm. and I'll kind of like make a mental note and it's weird sometimes like I think if you're just mentally open to it like mm-hmm. I have my feelers out looking for something because I know I have a scene coming up and then I will mm-hmm. take that song and absolutely pulverize it I will just listen to it <laughs> over and over oh, and over okay. and over and over until it like I'll hear it you know, a week later or something, and I'm numb. I don't feel anything about it anymore because I've, like, squeezed every bit of, like... interesting, yeah. Which is weird. I only noticed this season that I did that. It's, like, I just fixate on something, and it, like, it's... I feel like when, at least for me, when I'm in sort of the emotional guts of something, Mm. in order to, like... Like, it's our responsibility as actors to, like, keep the burner on. Like, you just keep it on Mm. simmer because... Mm You know, you're filming a scene sometimes for two hours or four hours or longer or something. And Mm -hmm. hopefully they're conscientious that, like, it's an emotional scene. So, like, they'll shoot your close-up or your coverage or something first and then, like, kind of back up a little bit because it's hard to stay in that place. It's not a fun place to be. So I think for me the trick is just to listen to the music like just over and over again because it like kind of keeps me frozen in that headspace it's almost like a state of self-hypnosis kind of or meditation kind of it's like a meditation it's a meditation on like and it's funny because i can never pinpoint like sometimes it's a chord in a song right or sometimes it's a lyric like it's a word or a line Mm. or a phrase or something that i'm like oof, like that Mm -hmm. hit me in a way that like yeah so like I like remember not... one episode, it was like this Jeff Tweedy song, and mm-hmm. I listened to it probably 40 times or something. Yeah. Like over the course of, of filming this one scene, I just, you know, I'd sit while they're setting up cameras and we do a rehearsal mm. and then they're setting things up. And I'll oh, just okay. like go to my chair and quietly and I'll listen to something and I'll read my sides and keep my phone away from me and just mm. like focus and I don't know. That's what works for me. And I love the idea that it's you, – you now maybe you're such in a in a rhythm with the show that, like, it's because you're um, looking ahead to a couple episodes. Like, you've just read the script and that's what the song you, – you want to fold the song maybe. into Maybe, yeah. But also I think, like, we have the benefit of working on this project that, like, like I said, we have 36 episodes in the can now. Like, yeah. we have this history that we've built and this, like – these memories and Hmm. and I get emotional talking about it. It's like, what is like, I'm a total, like I can press that nostalgia button in my own life, like right at any, Mm -hmm. at any point. And I feel like that show does the same thing for viewers, but it does the Mm -hmm. same thing for us. Like Mm -hmm. when we read the scripts, when we watch the show, like we're just as touched and moved by things because it is – it's real. Mm-hmm. Like, it it works, you know? Incredible. Yeah. I've seen a lot of that of, like, you guys reacting to – you post a lot about your own reactions yeah. to episodes and stuff. And it sounds like it's, it's got to be real. Because we get it has to be. excited about it, too. Yeah. We're all so proud of one another. And because mm. we don't all work together very often – mm. it's like we're able to be fans of the show as well because, like, I want to champion, like – 
I freaking love, you know, everybody. I want to see, like, Sterling and Susan and I want their mm-hmm. scenes. And I want to see, <laughs> like, Chrissy and Justin and Sully. And, like, everybody's so fantastic. And it's such a pleasure to watch their work and how mm. incredible they all are, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Totally. So, you, I mean, it's funny that you're saying you don't consider yourself a serious actress. I mean, are you going to – what does the future hold? Can you look <laughs> ahead? Are you going to keep doing – I hope so. This or keep doing acting or is it drama or is it TV? Like I don't know. You're in this now. I'm in this zone right now. I'm in yes. this like frame of mind and I feel lucky cuz for all of us this show has opened the doors up for uh-huh. a wealth of new opportunities. Yes. I don't know what they are right now because it's not your job to know right it's now. It's not yeah. yeah. And also like there's no time. We have yeah. this like we have a little less than 4 months off and a lot of people are going off and doing films and fun fun stuff, which is awesome. Uh-huh. And I, because we have this little narrow sliver, it's like, A, it's hard to find something to, like, just slip in there. But, B, you also want to, like, rest. I yes. feel tired. Yeah, re- <laughs> I'm like, rejuvenate. I want to sleep mm-hmm. and just live some life. But also, Good. Yeah. the show is, the writing is so exceptional. And I feel so fortunate to play this woman, this fully formed fully fleshed out Hmm. woman from 25 to like Hmm. 68 Mm -hmm. and every different iteration and version and chapter of her life is on full display and that's hard to find otherwise like I really stumbled into this like gem of a situation and it's hard to (laughs) to like to want to sort of like extricate yourself from that and go like, okay, well, I'm going to put that on pause and go do something else where I play sort of a cardboard cutout of a, of a woman. Comparatively, a right. Yeah. I'm like, eh. Yeah. I, I, I feel That's lucky so that cool. I can be a little choosier and just say, mm, I'll wait. I'll wait for like something. I'll yeah. wait for that musical. Yes. There I'll you wait go. for that musical. Well, and, and that's – the process of reinvention is always so interesting to me because you – you did that, but did you consciously? You said that you st- you stumbled into the this I did. gig, but I mean, how did you get involved? Did they, they approach you? No, I auditioned. You auditioned. Okay, I auditioned. Cool. I read the script and I auditioned and I um, loved it. And mm-hmm. I remember the feedback was they really liked you, but they're gonna like go. You're you were like one of the first girls that they read, and they're gonna go to like New York and they're gonna read a bunch of people everywhere. So it's probably not gonna be. Really? A, you won't hear about it for probably like a month or so. They're okay. gonna get back to us, and I was like, okay. And sure enough. Like, probably a month or five weeks after that, they had done Long the rest time. of their auditioning. Wow. And I had, like, gone, okay, like, wiped yeah. my hands of it. They came back and said, okay, so there's going to be three girls and three guys that they're going to go in and read. And mm. uh, I remember them telling me they really love Milo, this guy Milo uh-huh. Vedemilia. He's, like, the guy to beat. And okay. I was like, okay, like, great, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he's a wonderful guy. Sure. <laughs> um, but what does that have to do with me? <laughs> um, and then I remember going in, um, and we had to prepare uh, the only scene, really, um, that's not me, like, giving birth in the pilot, uh, which like, the very oh. first scene of the pilot where I'm, like, pregnant and, like, doing the little birthday dance with yes. the cupcake. And then Dan wrote the scene that ended up being in that second episode mm-hmm. where I confront him about drinking and... The whole, like, we need to be, you know, a, a 10 for the kids or at least a 9 or mm. whatever I, whatever that speech was. Mm-hmm. So they prepared I that see. whole scene. And um, I went in and read that. And then I only read with Milo. Mm. Well, thank you for all the advice. I thought, okay, Selena. maybe this is a good sign because that was the guy to beat. And they only had me read with him. And then uh, I left. And that was that was it. That was and it. then I, we got a call, like, the next day, and it was all good, and the rest was, yeah, history. That's amazing. I mean, yeah. but but the, that initial impulse to even go out for it, was that, did you think of it as a reinvention? Like, did you want to? I had done three pilots that hadn't gotten picked up, and I was utterly okay. depressed. Oh, my gosh. And I was like, yeah. I was this like. This is the stuff we love here. Oh, yeah. The I was like, great. <laughs> so I don't think I need to be an actor anymore. Oh, no. I need to move back to Orlando and, I don't know, go back to school, um, maybe make another record if anybody even cares about that. Like, oh, things were dark. I was going through a divorce. Like, it was uh-huh. just. Life was not um, firing. It was the yeah. it was a, it was a downslope, as it were. Yes. You know the ebb and flow totally. of of life. That's and when interesting things happen. Yeah, totally. Yeah. But so I was really, um, I was I was 
uh, concerned with putting myself back in the mix for like traditional network pilot season because mm-hmm. I had been so disappointed. And I thought, yeah. why well, do that to myself again? Um, I, why don't we just, um, as a team, my my agent and manager, everybody, we all sort of mm-hmm. decided like, you know what, maybe we'll focus on like cable or Netflix or something and try and find something in that. I mm-hmm. mean, obviously audition, not that something is going to get offered to me, well, but like maybe just focus on those things because it's it's a whole new world and like mm-hmm. TV shows are, and movies and whatnot are being made year round now. It doesn't just happen during pilot True. season. And then I got this off cycle pilot that had been written. It was the untitled Dan Fogelman project. Right. And I remember thinking like, what? I had just signed with a new agent and I was like, we just like talked about Uh, this this is this is like not what i want to do yeah yeah i was like but she's really smart and she's super picky she must have sent this to me for a reason Uh so i read it and of course was like immediately picked up the phone and was like what is it going to take for me to be a part of this okay so it was almost like you even though you're mandy moore and you're famous (laughs) you still had to do the thing that a lot of working actors do of like Failed pilots are very common. You they are end up absolutely, in yeah. absolutely, and I do know that. But I think I, uh, yeah, I, I thought the first one that I did, um, I remember like it almost went, and everybody was like, mm-hmm. "It's a shoe, and it's going." It's, it was okay. this ABC like half hour comedy, and it was single mm-hmm. cam, and I had lead? developed it. I had, it was a lead, okay. and I was just like fantastic. Like I didn't even think it was. An, I was like, "These, this is my family for the next like six years." I had like uh-huh. my arms around everybody. Yeah, and it almost went, and then it didn't, okay. and I was like, "Ooh, like like Ugh. somebody had like punched me in the gut." Like I, yep. not. I mean, I'm sure people listening are like, come on. But I think as no, an actor, I mean, yeah. you're I, – I don't know. I just – I was a naive young lady to mm-hmm. think that, like, it was just that easy. It was that simple. You sure. just sign up for something and you tape one episode and boom, it happens. Yeah. Um, and then I remember then the next year, same thing. It was like I felt mm. really – it was an hour drama and it was CBS and it was like – Oh, how funny. It just was – I felt like I felt the material and it was emotional and – Nope, that didn't go either. And it was like, oh, okay. And then the next year was another one. <laughs> was it on a different network? It was Is on it all... CBS as well, but it was oh, okay. a half-hour comedy. It was like James Rode mm. and Tracy Ullman <gasps> didn't get picked up. So I was like, Tracy I think Ullman. Uh, Tracy Ullman. And I was Oof. like, I guess I am the bad luck charm here. Like, I'm the oh. reason that, like, these things aren't going because all of these people otherwise <sighs> are fabulous and these shows are great and – uh, it's just the, the all the tr- typical thoughts trick, of all the typical thoughts yeah. of like yeah so you start to spin out and then mm-hmm. I remember the next pilot season I even went in and auditioned for a couple of things and didn't get them things that I was like yeah. ugh this is <laughs> I'm not this is ugh I don't even After like Tracy this Allman, yeah <laughs> yeah totally like the next year was like fine I guess like ugh, I just need a job I need to do something interesting and. Then I didn't even get them. Right. And that was like when I There's was in a downward. real deeply, darkly place and yeah. was like, you this is like probably not in the cards for me. I think like I had my moment as an actor and oh my God. that ship has sailed. And uh, and I'm sure, FYI, I will probably feel that way at some point in my career again. It's just inevitable. It's the inevitability of being flows. an actor. Yeah, yeah. totally. That yeah. you go, oh, my gosh, I, I am I ever going to have a job again? Yeah. All That's the time. kind of the one guarantee is that there are absolutely no guarantees yeah. in the acting industry. For sure. And even the most established actors have significant dry spells. Absolutely. I mean, is it also safe to say that that's more true for women than it is for men? There are I would imagine, yeah. meatier and more roles out there for men? Yep. I absolutely. hope and I think that TV is changing that. Oh, absolutely. Right? I think TV the last five, yeah. seven years has really changed the game for women in that yeah. regard. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good time to be an actress in television. It absolutely is. I think I think it's like the medium for women yeah. right now, like more so it's than fun. film. It's there's yeah. just so many it's where it's at. like inclusively brilliant women like like uh, we have a mostly female writers room. Like I feel mm-hmm. like there's a lot of like energy going towards like women up and coming. We have uh, one of our showrunners is a is a lady. Like I just I mm-hmm. feel I feel that collective like Super energy, important. Yeah. yeah. Symbiotic energy. That's great. Um, should we get to the crying? The mechanics. Look, you're drinking water. Is drinking water part of crying? <laughs> Staying hydrated, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> the mechanics. 
mechanic. Because I, you're you're a genius, you're a master at it, what? and I'm not. You I don't really know are. What I'm doing. You are a genius at crying. I've just had. Some I've sad asked Claire Danes happen. this too, because Claire Danes. Oh has God, her, she like, does the pr- like her the crying thing. Ugly cry. <laughs> yeah, she yeah, does yeah. a great ugly cry. <laughs> yeah. Do you have tricks of the trade? And like, if you don't want to share them, if they're like a magician's secret and you don't want to share them, then that's fine. But like, how do you? What were her tricks of the trade? Well, she she kept talking about how she had like an elastic face. And, like, she just has, like, the muscles in her face that she contorts in such a way. Whoa. But she very much also does the, like, get in the zone, go to a dark place. Go to get in the, the zone, emotional, go to a dark like, place. It sounds like that's what you do as I well. I think that's like, the—I don't think there's really any other trick. There's no, like, outside-in trick of, like— I don't think so. I mean, they always are, like, someone's like, I can blow menthol in your eyes. I'm like, that's just going to make my eyes oh, burn. Like, that's not— Is that an option? It's— I think sometimes they do that to get people, like, sort of teary-eyed, but I feel like it makes you just look Mm, mm -hmm. glassy-eyed. Also, I have contacts, so, like, that's never going to work for me. It's like, I have a barrier here that's, Uh, like, nothing's permeating that. It has to come from you. That's not realistic. It's not realistic. I feel like um, that's that's a weird, like, old-school trick Mm. of the trade that, like, is just not— that's not a real tear. It's just, like, your eyes watering because, like, you're chopping onions or something. But— I don't think there's a trick beyond, like, you got to connect to it on an emotional level, like, mm-hmm. what what you're experiencing, what you're talking about. Like, even if it's not apples to apples, like, you have to find a way in. Mm-hmm. And it's – I think it's easy when the material is great. <laughs> it, makes, yeah. it makes our job so much easier. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think that I would be able to go there – for just anything. I couldn't sure. like – like I just taped Ellen and yeah. she was talking about the crying too. And I was like I can't just like sit here in front of the audience and like start Do crying. It. Like yeah, that's yeah. not that's no, not no. really how it works. But yeah. Right. And it's not so much about the waterworks too. Like I, It's about what's behind it. For sure. Yeah. And I don't mean to suggest too like <laughs> I'm not saying you cry in every emotional scene too. No, that's no, 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 no. the genius of the show. Like he's not going to use every take that you cry. No. Sometimes it's more important to like – To not cry. That's – Sometimes more that makes upsetting. me cry more is when someone's on absolutely, the verge of tears. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Watching that show. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good cry. The tissue, the jokes you guys make about the tissues that need to be on hand, like, oh, this episode is like a five tissue episode. Yeah. This episode's like a two tissue episode. This episode's like a washcloth. Like, you just, <laughs> yeah. I feel bad. Like, we're keeping the tissue industry, like, employed, really but <laughs> we're really not an environmentally friendly show in that sense. Washcloths is recommended. Yeah. yeah. A washcloth, a hand towel, like something that you can, you know, throw in the laundry afterwards and reuse yeah. next episode. Once a week, just in that laundry <laughs> exactly. load. Exactly. I mean, you so are interacting with these fans and you're hearing from them all the time. Like, yeah. And people must have asked, considering the show is so big, why ha- why is it resonating now? Like, what is it about this show? People are really now? hungry for this kind of entertainment that allows them to feel their emotions. I think there's so much... Yeah happening in our world nowadays that like there's people have a lot of of confused energy and don't know where to put it and I think like our show just sort of happened at the right time for people to go oh okay at least for like one hour a week I can sit down and I can like pour every weird complex Mm. feeling that I'm having like into something and maybe make sense of it. I think it also allows people to like hold a mirror up to their own lives and themselves and like really think about the choices they've made and the people that are in their lives. Like there's a lot. I think anytime you include family and involve family, Mm -hmm. it's bound to like, I don't know make people feel a whole lot. <laughs> yeah, once and putting it so front and center in a show is yeah. it almost feels rare. I mean, obviously there's tons of TV shows out there about family, but yeah. this one feels like it's so at the center. But as you say, it's not trying to elicit tears from a, from an audience. Yeah. It's, it's just telling a story. Yeah. But it's really resonating yeah. with people. Yeah. We're And very does it grateful. feel like a huge responsibility and for that reason like no. you're those fans, do you feel like you got to yeah, – I don't know. It's funny. Like we were watching – Milo and I tried to watch every episode together. Um, oh, cool. And we were watching the episode that just aired last night together yesterday at, in Dan's office. And mm. and I just remember like finishing with the episode. And it, it was a l- much more lighthearted episode. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I was like, I just love this 
family. I love mm-hmm. these people. Like, I get it. I want to spend time with them too. Like, I want to yeah. like, like I love peeking in on their lives once a week. Like, yeah. whether it's Randall and Beth or you know um, Toby and Kate. Like, I just I love the world that's been mm-hmm. created, like together and separately. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That like I I get it. I get yeah. that, and I think that that's what people people are willing to be on this journey with us because they like this family. They like these people, yeah. and they want to like come along every week totally. and see what they're up to. Well, and there's something to be said almost for um, the second season of a show. Like the beauty of television is that you can actually become nostalgic for the show itself. Yeah. <laughs> if it runs for long enough, then you're it creates that memory of like, oh, we're going to sit down every week to yeah. watch the show. Yeah. Like growing up, it was the West Wing. Like my family oh my would watch God. the West Wing every Wednesday. Like <laughs> The greatest show ever of all <laughs> right. time, period. Right. Also NBC, yeah. Yeah. And we would sit and that is such a powerful nostalgia memory of like, in fact, I haven't actually revisited that show because what. I know. I know. Can I just it's tell you? It's actually at the top of the list. But oh, there's too much TV and I There's too much good TV. I know. But like it is insane. I just rewatched it maybe two years oh, ago. Uh-huh. It's insane how relevant, especially I think right now, yes. how relevant it is to yes. like everything that's happening in the world. It's crazy. You're like, what? That was in 99. Like that was right. still, we're still talking about that or things haven't changed. Like mm. it's mm-hmm. Aaron Sorkin, man. Right. And it's firing on all cylinders, right? All acting, cylinders. Directing. Everybody. Yeah. Come Every on. Week. Bradley Whitford. I like yeah. literally, I met him at the SAG Awards. And uh-huh. I was like, I cannot speak to you. So <laughs> I'm just going to, I can't even look at you. Does that inspire you? Do you watch other TV shows for inspiration or for research or for? Uh, no, just as a fan. Just as a fan. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And Always. that all gets folded into every, you're bringing every experience to every scene you act. You sure. Bring it yourself. But yeah. also, like, it's just. It's just fun to watch good entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> it's as easy as that. Yeah. Simple as that. Um, you mentioned rehearsal. I want to go back to the rehearsal yeah. aspect because mm-hmm. you, that we were talking about getting in the zone. Do you do rehearsal at 100%? No. Oh, okay. No, no, no. No, it's just like by the marks. More like the marks. blocking? Yeah. Okay. It's more of a blocking rehearsal. It's just like gotcha. to kind of give the crew a sense of like your marks and where mm-hmm. you're going to do, where you're going to go and what you're going to do. But like, yeah, you would save it for uh-huh. the day. I keep coming back to there's so much trust involved in in creating TV mm-hmm. and creating any any acting or piece of art, I guess. But for something that's running a long time, yeah. writers, actors, directors, the crew, you keep mention, mentioning the crew. Yeah. It all comes down to like an environment of trust is where that creativity can come from. It's true. Where you can take risks, where you can do that rehearsal, where you can learn more about the characters. Mm-hmm. That 12-minute therapy scene you're talking about where yeah. you're learning more about your dynamics as actors and as characters, right? Absolutely. It's all because of, like, you kind of have to love the people you're working with. Yes. <laughs> yeah. In every regard. Like, yeah. not just the people that you're on camera with, but the people that are that are behind the scenes that, mm-hmm. like, make it all work, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There has to be that innate trust w- with one another, amongst each other, mm-hmm. I think, in order for it to, like, really be firing on all cylinders. Yeah. It sounds like that's also a great piece of advice for for someone who's stepping onto the set for the first time. It's important to be respectful, right? Yes. Just be nice. Yeah, be <laughs> nice. And not just nice to the people like that you're on camera with, like right. be nice to the whole crew. Yeah. Because really it advice. goes a long way. And everybody's working long hours and you think about like the crew members that are there well before you are and yeah. well after you leave. Yeah. Like everybody matters and it doesn't work without everybody. So it's right. you you need to acknowledge them. And we're all on the same team. It's like it doesn't mm-hmm. work without everybody. Yeah. Yeah. That's we we've um Milo is incredible. I keep mentioning him because I work with him the most out mm-hmm. of anybody and and he's my partner in this, but um he shakes every crew member's hand like every time he walks on set. Mm. He knows everybody's mm. name, and he did from, like, episode two. Cool. He's so good. at. He's, like, a, such a great example. And I think because of that, he sets such a great example for the kids, too, like the 10-year-olds sure. and the teens yeah. who, like, this is – they're relatively they're new, new in the business. And, mm-hmm. you know, he – when we're all riding in the van together, he gets out and, like, holds the door for people and, like, lets – like, helps ladies out, helps them with their bags. Like, mm-hmm. he's a real gentleman and, like, a class act, and I love that – I get to work with somebody like that because mm-hmm. I feel like as mom and dad, we really do set the tone. Yeah. You know, we're one sure. and two on the call sheet yeah. and like people do kind of, 
I mean, we all look at him as dad. He's like the mm-hmm. patriarch. He's the, you know, he's definitely like our department head as an actor. Uh. But I feel like we're mom and dad and like we yeah. do like the buck stops here. And so um, I love that I, I have that a great partner in this. And yeah. and the kids do really like they, they've come to like really listen to us and they mm-hmm. really respect us. And so I, I like that we can sort of hopefully set a good example for them too with this job. Because we're like, not all yeah. jobs are like this. This is right. as good as it gets. Yeah. And maybe as good as it will ever be because <laughs> Milo's been doing this for 20 some odd years. I've been doing this for 18 years. And yeah. this is the best job either of us have ever had. Sure. So appreciate it. Appreciate the people you work with. Be kind mm-hmm. to the people you work with. It's simple things. Yeah, it's little things. It's yeah. not, And it's not hard. I don't know how we're doing in time, but I want to get all of your acting advice. Um, how do you – what is your number one piece of advice for someone who's, like, stepping onto a film set or a TV set for the first time? Oh, my gosh. My number one piece of advice. Um, try not to get overwhelmed, but, like, immerse yourself in the process and, like – be open to making mistakes and like mm. to be to learn like be open to learning um, how it all works like learn about the different departments learn what they do mm-hmm. like just the sort of basics like you don't even have you can ask questions but even just like observing i think getting yourself like off your phone and like in your own world unless you have to do that for work you know unless you're sort of like yeah. going inward for a scene or something mm-hmm. like i i loved just like pal around with people, like become friends and and observe like how people do their jobs because it's mm. really fascinating. Like how lucky are we all to work on film sets and TV sets sure. and like it's this huge uh, machine that's almost alive, you know? And mm. and I think it's I, I, that would be my advice. Mm-hmm. That natural like, curiosity is important. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot to learn. Yeah. And I think that it's helpful to carry that on to the next job as well. It's like if you mm. know the sort of basics about lighting, you'll you know, or the basics about like cameras and like what lenses they're on, like all of that stuff yeah. helps carry you to your next job. So when mm-hmm. someone's like, "Oh, I'm on a 35 or I'm on a 50 or something," you're like, "Okay, I, I know hand. basically where you are and what you're getting and gotcha. how much of me is on camera and mm. um or lighting. It's like knowing sort of like what where you need to face or not face or Mm -hmm. or or if you're blocking someone's you know you you see that you're shadowing them or something just like little things Mm -hmm. that take time to pick up but i would encourage people to sort of just like be open and focus on you know putting your feelers out there to learn as much as you can and makeup too are you learning a lot about makeup (laughs) (laughs) <sighs> I, I feel like at this point I could do my old age prosthetics. You could do it yourself? <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> I joke. I kid. It's really complex. But yeah, um, yeah. but yeah, I learn a little bit about that stuff. Yeah. I don't think I'm any good at it, but sure. Yeah. And does it require patience sometimes to sit there <laughs> for it does require however patience. many hours it takes? Just like some meditating. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's an like opportunity some, to like. Exactly. To really just like peace okay. out, zen out, like take mm-hmm. deep breaths and know that you're going to be in that chair for a good three and a half hours mm-hmm. and go with the flow. And then when the, when it's complete, do you look in the mirror and you do that, that outside in thing of like, aha, I am now old. Mm -hmm. I am now going to adjust my behavior accordingly or adjust my voice accordingly or like, does that help? I, it does help. Yeah. I feel like it's, it's the last step of like Mm. um, putting on those shoes, Mm -hmm. somebody else's shoes. Mm. I was initially really uh, nervous about it. But again, now that we're so many episodes into this show, Mm -hmm. uh, it's like second nature now. Now I, now I'm like, oh, I have that like three and a half hours to sort of click into it and I put on that Hmm. wig and I look in the mirror and I'm in those clothes and it just naturally sort of like settles Mm -hmm. and comes to you. And and the memory of playing a character. The memory. It's like a muscle memory for sure. Mm, For sure. And then it's like, oh, I'm on set with Sterling and I'm only on set with Sterling when I'm, you know, 67. Right. And I'm on set with Chrissy and I'm on set with Justin. It's like mm. I'm with my children and we I have lived a life and I've hmm. lost a spouse and I'm remarried and I have grandkids. And it's like hmm. whew, it all comes like flooding back. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you mentioned earlier, too, the working with kids and that sometimes working with kids can be can take a little longer. Yeah. And you – is it safe to say that you were also a child actor? You were in your teens when you were – Yeah, I was movies. kind of – 
Uh, I was the age that like Logan and Niles and Hannah are. Maybe a yeah. little bit. Like maybe Niles' age. He's right. he's fifteen, or I think he just turned sixteen. Um, so I, I'm I was his age. You were certainly introduced to the biz at an early age. Yeah. Slightly different biz at first. Yes. What is your advice for someone in that position Ooh. at that age? In that oh my gosh. I feel like it's so tricky with social media now and like our yeah. lives are on full I mean, you display. You mentioned the phone thing, like put your phone away. Yeah, because yeah. we all, I mean, I suffer from it too. It's like you just sure. get absorbed in like answering emails and looking on Instagram and it's fun to like go down that rabbit hole. But sure. it also, I think, like gets you out of sync with like what you should kind of be paying attention to. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think the advice is like always surround yourself with good people. I feel like that's a general mm-hmm, blanket mm-hmm. thing in life. But mm. I feel like when I was a kid, I worked with really good people who allowed me to still be a kid. Like no one forced me to become an adult, even though I was interacting in an adult world. And totally. for all intents and purposes, I kind of was. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nobody like made me dress a certain way or make choices that I felt uncomfortable doing. And mm. I still could like – you know, work on a film set and then go to, like, CPK with my friends, like, yeah. or go to the mall or something. Like, I totally. I still felt like I was very much allowed to be a teenager. Yeah. And uh, t- times are different now, but yeah. I feel <laughs> like a grandma saying that. But I would say, like, that was the biggest key for me, though, was, like, yeah. I still had my friends. I still had people that were, like, loved me for me and weren't invested in me, like, you know, in my job because yeah, of my cool. job. Yeah, and it's almost like it's about carving out time to be a kid or to, yeah, kind to of have, have some innocence. A, a life and yeah. the personal side of things. And mm. I think that's really important. And it's also I feel like it's easy to fall into the trap of being like a workaholic yeah. at an early age. Yeah. And that then, you of course, you don't have time for like the personal things. Yeah. And you want to experience all of that if you can. Because like, right, that's going to help you as an artist. Yes. Right? And, and just being a functional person in life, which will mm-hmm. also help you, <laughs> will benefit you yes. for being like a healthy artist <laughs> yes. as, as, you know, you continue down your career path. We should wrap up, but I thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Do you have any parting words of wisdom for backstage listeners? I don't know. (laughs) I feel like I should just be listening to the podcast to get advice from you guys. (laughs) I don't know. Just, like, keep plugging along. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm sure everybody says, like, this is a tough racket. It is so tough. and. I know it seems like the grass is greener f- for people that you perceive to have made it, but it's really no different. Like uh-huh. everybody has their doubts and insecurities and dry spells and yeah. missed opportunities and jobs that didn't come to fruition and all of that like is part of it. It's part of what builds up your constitution to mm. like appreciate those moments when things are firing and things do work. Mm. And like you can't have darkness without light. You can't have like good without bad. Like it all goes together mm-hmm. and it's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel sometimes. Totally. But I just would say like keep your head down, keep plugging along. Like we all see you. Like we mm. fellow actors and performers and musicians and entertainers, like we see you. We're all a collective family and yeah. we feel it and we're there for one another and we all get it. And like we celebrate those moments together and we're in it in the trenches together when, you know, times are a little tougher. So like that would just be my advice is like keep plugging along. Yeah. Like I almost gave up. I was almost like, well, I mean, I really had I, yeah. I'm this it's not hyperbole. Like I literally was like, wow, I was really lucky to have found that moment in my life where where um I, I th- things were were, you know, flowing for me and now that's not the case anymore and maybe I should just appreciate what I had and mm. that's it. And I I that little voice inside of me was like, no, it's not it. It's not. Mm. No, don't go back to Florida. Don't go just d- you know, into another field, like stick with this. Mm -hmm. It's what you love. It's what you're meant to do. And lo and behold, other opportunities present present themselves. And you got to keep working hard and rehearsing and practicing Mm -hmm. and finding ways to like exercise your craft and staying with it. Mm -hmm. And those opportunities will come and they'll take you by surprise as they should. And you'll, you'll be ripe to appreciate them in a way that you maybe wouldn't have before. Excellent. Amazing. (laughs) 
Thank you so Thank much, you. Mandy. Thank you. So awesome. This was great. I didn't even know we had started, and then I was like, "What? Oh, uh, I think this is this we're is it." We're talking about this it. This is it. This is happening. <laughs> This podcast is brought to you by Backstage, the world's number one casting platform. Listen, a lot of the guests on In the Envelope, an awards podcast, used Backstage at the beginning of their careers. It's how they are now in the running for Emmy, for Oscar, for Tony, etc. If you are at the beginning of your career as an artist, here's what you do. You go to backstage.com slash subscribe and enter the code envelope at checkout for a free 30-day trial. That's right. Free 30-day trial if you go to backstage.com slash subscribe and enter the code envelope. All you got to do then is make a profile, upload a headshot, and start applying to jobs to the thousands of casting notices that are uploaded every day, which you can filter online to match your specific talents, your specific needs, your specific looks. Get that dream started today. Check out that free 30-day trial, backstage.com slash subscribe, enter the code envelope. Let's do it. Milo Ventimiglia, like his This Is Us co-star Mandy Moore, entered Hollywood as a teenager before starring in Gilmore Girls, Heroes, and plenty of other film and TV hits. In addition to his recent SAG award, Milo was Emmy-nominated last year as leading actor in a drama for the first season of This Is Us, in which he plays Jack Pearson. Here it is, our interview with Milo Ventimiglia. Well, we are going to talk. I just spoke to Mandy yesterday. You did, yeah. The rest of the got podcast. it, got it. Um, so that might be a little deja vu for me, or deja vu for our <laughs> listeners. I don't know. But I was going to say, or or you'll <laughs> just see how much how much I now talk about Mandy. It's like we should do these podcasts <laughs> for one another. Totally. Yeah. Oh, she had great things to say about you. Mandy's the coolest about, man. She's. I mean, she's the sweetest person. She yeah. said that the we talked about the importance of being nice mm-hmm. on set. Yeah. And as you two are the kind of the top of the, um, what's it called? The call sheet. Yeah. yeah that we're, you we're set to, the tone. Yeah. Kind of, it's a responsibility. Very much so. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people forget about, you know, set should be fun. Set is yeah. something that should be a blast and should be good, but it's hard to have fun when, when you're not, um, incentivized to have fun when when there mm. isn't a respect and a kindness and a graciousness right. i think to handling what that onset work is like I, I always tell people i always tell people you know there's a product we're going to make and that is going to be great because mm-hmm. there's no way there are too many talented people to not let it be great but what we do are really in control of is the experience on set for the cast and the crew. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I, I always say the crew because the crew is is as important as the cast. Mm-hmm. Like walking around reminding everybody, every single member of the crew, like, hey, the successes are not just, you know, these seven or eight or nine faces that are out in the world right. or the writers or anything like that. Like it is it is a moving, moving crew. For and sure. When I see uh you know, when I see like my friends in each department every day where there's a comfort level that happens and mm. a trust that happens because of that. It's got so, it. Yeah. The yeah, trust so, is so crucial. Very crucial. Yeah. But so then you set up this tone of mm-hmm. being a very welcome, um, very safe space, not only for, mm. you know, um, for the creative to happen, but to have fun and enjoy yeah. and be kind. You know? Yeah. It's a, it's like an office job in the sense that you guys go into work every day. Yeah. It's sort of like a nine to five and you need a, you need a positive <laughs> constructive say, it's, work. It's, it's a little more like a, like a four to eight. 4 a.m. to 8 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I definitely want to get into it. I want to get into how you mentioned like how actors work. Sure. And we're gonna, I'm gonna get you to spell it out and how you do what <laughs> cool. you do. <laughs> cool man. But take me back to the beginning. Mandy said that you guys, she said that there were three women and three men in contention for the two roles, mm-hmm. and that she only read with you. Yeah. Um, I. There, there was actually one other guy that I knew, and actually an actor that I'd known mm. who was there, and um, someone who you see in every audition room when you're going out for. Yeah, okay. like he, years ago, he um, he had worked with a friend of mine, and uh, and then yeah, he just, you know, we're we're 
guys about the same age. I think yeah. about 38 years old, dark build, you know, 5'10", just kind of like, oh, okay. Right. I see, I see the type you're going for. Technically a rival <laughs> in, in a way. But, but never. Right. You know, I mean, and that's, and that's the it's interesting thing. It, it, it is competitive and it's not competitive. Like mm-hmm. I personally celebrate actors. If I see an actor that I've, that's, that I've known has been in the business now 20 plus years, like sure. I have, yeah. I, I'm very happy about that because I feel like they, they've, they've stayed mm. and, and they've made it. And, and it's an, always an encouraging thing. You know, the, the competition, there are plenty of jobs and there are jobs that I want that maybe I didn't get that someone else that I know that they got, mm-hmm. but th- that wasn't the job I was supposed to get. Yeah, exactly. And I live very much in that where people and close friends of mine remind me, you know, the jobs that you get are the jobs you're supposed to get. The places you are are the places you're supposed to be. The people you're in contact with mm. are the people that you're supposed to be around. Brilliant. You know? So I never, I never doubt, um, how it all went down, but yeah, mm-hmm. there, there was one other guy and, and there were three women um, and I read with all three, but yeah, Mandy, Mandy only read with me, Yeah, you know, and, and the, the, it something was, something clicked. It sounds it, like it wasn't even something. It was kind of everything. Yeah. Cool. It, it, it was, you know, Mandy, Mandy will be very sweet and she'll say it was palpable from the beginning, <laughs> you know, but me, like, I, I just know that it was working on, on every level. Cool. Um, mm. you know, there's a moment when you're an actor and you get to look someone in the eye. And sometimes you, you kind of understand which eye they're looking at you from mm. and you'll kind of search for it and they're searching for it and then you just kind of lock into someone. Uh-huh. And so there's that that search and that discovery. Mandy and I, there we, was were, no... we were right. There was, there was no searching. We That's were just awesome. right there immediately in it. And it was undeniable mm-hmm. how, how much it had to be her, mm. mm-hmm. you know? That was the awesome. thing. I mean, every, everyone else that read great actors great great actors right. that had these these beautiful nuances but but this had to be mandy mm-hmm. it had to be mandy that's so awesome and i want to ask about all of your your many auditions too <laughs> but the about this is us specifically did you know during that audition process did you have any idea that this would be the hit that it is no you the can, most you, watched network show <laughs> no you never know okay. you never know i mean I knew the script was great. I knew right. um, this character, I really wanted to bring him to life, these beautiful words that Dan had written. Mm-hmm. But what it has become, and I think I think that's a combination of where the, the world is at. Yes. And what mm. we're needing as, as, um, as human beings, mm-hmm. how we're needing to feel, we're needing to find a place to come together because we're so spread out and, and forced apart in so many ways. Mm-hmm. That everyone, every man, woman, child, every gender, every 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 race, every everything is just everyone can come together and agree on family. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. the family you you are born into, or the family that you decide to have, and yeah. you, that you make yourself with your friends, with your partners, with anything. It's mm. like because love is universal. Mm-hmm. Love truly is a universal concept Absolutely. and it's, and it's hard to describe in words for many of us. Um, but we all feel and we all feel full with it and we feel empty without it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So I just think it's, it's one of those shows that because it's tapped into something that we as a, a community of human beings are right yeah. now, we need that. Yeah. And because of that, people have really grabbed onto it. They've really embraced totally. it and they've embraced us and so on and so forth. Yeah. I think it has a lot to do with the, the being 2017 and 18. Like this exact moment in time is when we need a show like that. Yeah. It's both surprising that it became a hit and it makes perfect sense. Yeah. 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 And you can never forecast it. Right. When, as, yeah. When you're doing the audition process and you're like, yeah, I'm sure you've done auditions where the script is brilliant, everything mm-hmm. seems to be working, and it doesn't get picked up or it doesn't go anywhere. Or yep, totally the been time. there, man. It yeah. Happens all the time. <laughs> this experience and this character feels like it's just validating a way that I've tried to live my life for a very long time, which mm-hmm. is is be compassionate, be understanding, um, inspire hope and goodness and strength, mm-hmm. um, and just be kind. You know, Excellent. so yeah. so so teaming up with. Fogelman and, and everyone else, it yeah. feels like, oh, this just validates and, and the successes of the show mm-hmm. kind of validate like the way that I was raised in a way, mm. you know, like my folks, they're really just great people, really, really good people. And I feel like they kind of 
armed me with mm -hmm. what I need to be a decent, kind human being. Totally. But also not allow anyone to take advantage of that or walk all over that or anything. Mm -hmm. Like you've got to be able to stand up for yourself, even in kindness. Yeah. Yeah, and, and reconcile your flaws and recognize oh, your own yeah. flaws and totally because we're all flawed, man. Totally. Deeply. And season two for Jack, it's been a lot of it's been a lot of that. Yeah. They went they kinda went there in a, in a <laughs> I think a constructive way. Like Yeah. We got to know more about that side of him. And there's still a lot more to go. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, even even coming at the tail end of the second season, so having shot uh thirty six mm. episodes. Yeah, wow. Well. That's, 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 doesn't feel like a lot. It's 36 hours we've known this man. Yeah, that's true. You wow. Know? That both feels like, a, 36 hours feels like a long time, but we feel like we've known him in his entire adult life or something. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But we've only known him a day and a half. Yeah. Isn't yeah. Bizarre. Yeah. It's really bizarre, but there's still so much to uncover. And, and that's for, for every character on the show. Uh -huh. But you know, in particular, Jack, Jack is still a mystery. And I, mm. I, I wonder though, if he's a mystery because we know his death, because there are things that we see his impact on his family and his kids and all that. Definitely. But also, you know, we, we don't know entirely what has kind of created this, like how he's been mm. evolved into this man who, who uh, who just like loves his wife and loves his kids and it's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. Would you say you know him the best? I think Dan Fogelman probably knows him the best. Okay, see, okay, cool. <laughs> I don't know. I you know I try. I really I really try. Is that your task? That's kind of before you for this role. I think that is always every job I get. I, I wonder to myself, okay, how do I pull this off? Can I convincingly be this man? You know. Mm -hmm. Um. And, and with Jack, it's, it's no different, but it's, it doesn't feel like such a task, like I'm staring, you know, I'm at the base of, of a, a mountain ready to climb it. Right. It just feels like I'm, I'm on a road and it's flat mm. and it may be windy in the fruit in the future and it may dip and it right. may have an incline. I don't really know, but I'm just going to put one foot in front of the other and not get ahead of myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even though I know. He's, he's deceased in the present day, but I'm still not going to get ahead of myself. Right. I love that. I mean, is he a mystery to you in a good way? Like, it's almost like as an actor, your your job is to both make it less of, make your character less of a mystery for yourself so mm -hmm. you can play that character and connect with it, but also maybe preserve some of that mystery, some of that unknown. I mean, there there are show and character secrets that of course you know they'll they'll come out when when we need them to when when, when we're when yeah. we're telling those stories right mm -hmm. about this particular incident or that right incident or that um but what i feel responsible to is just making sure every moment is real and true mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and believable that and one that, step ahead of the other kind yeah, of yeah and and that this man is human that he's he's alive he's sure he's you know on a TV in our living rooms mm. or on our phones or, or on our iPads or devices or things like that. But who he is, he's a living, breathing human being. Yeah. Wow. Um, and you know, and, and Dan Fogelman, God bless he and the writers. They're very, very inclusive to us. Mm -hmm. You know, they want us to know history and background and, and where we're going and where we've been. Cause all of that is information that informs how we play these parts. Mm -hmm. You know, in the beginning it was, it was a lot of, let's say, Mandy and I trying to like understand the family history, even the big three. Right. You know, Justin, Christy, and Sterling, they had lived the 36 years until the day that we met them. Right. But yet none of us really knew what those 36 years <laughs> were. Yeah. So. It was harder for them to, yeah. Yeah. I, I thought, I think it was a lot harder for them to, to drum up the past and understand right. the history because, you know, Mandy and I, we were part of that history and we're figuring all that out and we're, we're living it. But the the adult big three, they're really having to like imagine and dream and, and, right. and just kind of get information. Yeah. They have to hint at some mm -hmm. background and yeah. you got to do that thing sometimes on TV show where you maybe have to make a choice or invent your own backstory before you have the answers laid out for you. It sounds like sometimes. Dan Fogelman communicates a lot with you and Mandy. He does. He does. Dan, Dan is really communicative with us. Um, and I, I try not to deviate or imagine too far Mm -hmm. outside of the direction of the script. Yeah. I it's feel like all this, there. The script is everything that I need. Yeah. You know? Um, 
and I have a basic understanding of, of the man's history. And, and, you know, there aren't, let's say, a specific moment where he had a bad, really bad run in with his father. Uh-huh. You know, we've seen a couple of young Jack and we've seen the drinking and things like that. So I, mm. so I can look at that and understand. But also, you know, it's, it's all play pretend. I don't, mm. even in life, sometimes some people live through specific details. I know sometimes I don't, but I know what something feels like. Right. So if I know mm. what something feels like for Jack, the specific memory of it, it's, it's unimportant. It doesn't matter. Gotcha. It doesn't matter. That's almost how memory works. It's like mm-hmm. the feelings that came with it rather than that. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Di- much different than like, you know, an episode of Black Mirror where we're going back and replaying, Aha. <laughs> you know, yes, specific indeed. details and memories. Back to the, the you and Dan communicating so mm-hmm. much and you guys are obviously such a family on and off screen. Mm-hmm. Is there ever like, do you communicate about your own personal lives and put that, does he put that into the script? Is there ever like a, um, you recognize something from a, your yeah, life or his? Yeah. You know, there, there's, there's a lot of similarity. Like I kind of laugh. I, I guess there's, it's no surprise that Jack is always documenting, you know, with the uh, camera uh-huh. Like on set every day. I have my cameras and I'm uh-huh. taking photos, you know, it's, it's no mystery that, that Rebecca sings mm-hmm. and has a passion for it. Mm-hmm. Mandy sings. She has a passion for it. Mm-hmm. Um, I know Sterling, Sterling, uh, um, has been in and speak, spoken to Dan and the writers about uh, certain things that happen in his life. And, mm-hmm. and I think mm-hmm. Chrissy and Justin have done the same, you know, so, but, but Dan has, as a very specific talent, a very, very unique way of taking those things and not having them right on the nose, but mm-hmm. ha- kind of, kind of shifting the perspective a little bit and, and changing the focus hmm. and, and telling the story in his own way. But it, it just, if it, it, it strikes real, it feels real. Yeah. It must you be know? jolting. Do you ever see, you ever see something in the script that makes you go, oh, that's directly from some conversation I had? No, no, no. nothing like that. But it's I not mean, that direct. It's not that, no, yeah. it's not that direct. Um, but it's funny. I, I, so many times I feel like I've, mm. I've lived through this experience with Jack, but on the younger end with my father okay. in some situations where I feel like I'm playing a version of my father as Jack. Amazing. Which is pretty trippy. I know. Well, it's so complicated. I mean, it's so complicated. It? Yeah. And it's also, it's like, you know, my dad is not Jack and Jack is not my dad. Oh, and, right. and they're very different people, but, but it's more like their spirit mm-hmm. is similar. And I think just, I find, <laughs> I, <laughs> I find myself just playing a version of my own father at times and I'll laugh and Mandy and I will sit and talk about it. I'm like, Oh my God, I'm my dad right now. I'm totally my dad. I mean, (laughs) down to like what he's wearing sometimes Uh, or mannerisms or things that he says or does. And, but it's also, it works. It just, it must. It's just Jack as well. Totally. Yeah. I, we all become our parents, right? And by the way, I'm, I'm okay with that. My, (laughs) My mother and father are the greatest people on the planet i love them totally and that like we were saying that that those personal family connections inspire a show where you're playing your characters with these personal family yeah. connections it's yeah like, totally it's part of your homework as an actor almost to have Pretty those much, connections man. relationships yeah. yeah yeah no it it very much is you know i mean there's of course you know the the, the line learning or mm. or kind of just like sitting and thinking about emotions and emotional state and mm-hmm. what i can bring for another actor in a scene but um mm. yeah the real homework feels like just soaking in life you know, mm-hmm. and being able to live it while the cameras are rolling. Mm. Being present. Being which is present. so much easier said than done. It's so much easier said said than done, but it's also what's so hard about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about getting out of your own way and like. Yeah. Getting off your devices. Yeah. Sitting in the Supporting. room, deciding that mm. this is the best part of your day because you're here and it's mm. happening right now. And the mm-hmm. second it's gone, you're not going to get it back. Mm-hmm. That's the thing that's kind of troubled me since I was a younger actor and kind of what really impacted me as an actor was knowing that the second a scene is done, mm. I can't get it back. Mm-hmm. So if I'm not there giving everything I can to it, if I haven't prepared for that scene, if I just showed up and said, ah, you know, screw it. I'm going to learn my lines right now and look at my lines. Oh, Like I'm doing such a disservice, not only to the people that I'm there working with, right. but, but to myself because I'm missing the moment. Yeah. You know, so many people miss the moment all the time because they're, they're too far in the future. Their, their heads are buried in their devices. They're, they're, they're worried about, you know, wrongs they've done in the past. It's like, well, yeah, but now is happening now. Mm -hmm. You got to be in the now all the time. How do you, how do you get in that zone? What are the steps that you take in that day to day? Like what do actors need to know to get, to be on a network 
you know, network show that requires a lot of emotion. Um, what are your techniques? Oh man, um, you know, I I'd had a, uh, several conversations. We have a very talented group of younger actors. Mm-hmm. Um, oh know, yeah, from from the ten year olds to the the teens, even though they're not teens. Hannah's twenty. Uh-huh. Logan's almost nineteen. <laughs> Niles is seventeen. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was having a conversation with Logan, just talking about uh, um, scene work and like how you kind of mm-hmm. um, get ready for it and what you do and the experience of it. And we had this one particular scene where we were, uh, I think it was, it was it was the episode where Kevin breaks his knee, mm-hmm. and Jack is on the road trip with with um, young Randall, teen Randall. And he comes back and he gives him this talk in this hospital and gives him his necklace and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And um, and Logan was just kind of like struggling in this one moment. Mm-hmm. And once the scene was, and he was beautiful. He was so beautiful in this scene. Mm-hmm. So good, so right, so spot on. But then after, you know, I could see like a little disappointment in him. And so I pulled him off to the side. We grabbed some lunch and sat in the trailers. And, mm-hmm. and I just said to him, I said, hey man, I said, first of all, don't beat yourself up. The scene was great. Second of all, I see a lot in what you're doing in what I did when I was younger mm. and kind mm-hmm. of this, this game plan for yeah. how a scene goes. Yeah. And so like, I know as an actor and as a younger actor, and even as you know, where I am now in my, in my forties, I can read a scene, I can imagine a scene, but then I can't plan for a scene. And I said right. to Logan, I said, the only thing you can do is ever prepare. Mm-hmm. Prepare mm-hmm. your words. Know your words, front and back. Right. Know the emotional state you need to be in. Beyond that, if you start planning, what happens when those plans go sideways and you can't adapt? Right. And I said the reason why you're beating yourself up low is because you made a plan in this scene, but you couldn't deviate from it. Totally. And I said no all you ever need to do, man, learn your lines, mm-hmm. show up in whatever emotion you need to show up with, and look me in the eye, yeah. son. That's all you got to do. Yeah. You know. So for for me, it's I, I try and I try and make things as uncomplicated as I can, mm-hmm. and and you know what I've really landed on is this idea of preparing without planning. Yeah, you know, because like let's say you're in a scene and and in the middle of the scene, um, you know, it's scripted. This this character breaks down crying, mm-hmm. and you're just not feeling it but you're trying to force yourself. And and this is something I did a lot when I was younger. Mm-hmm. I would have to like really force myself to find that emotional place. And it, it, <laughs> one time I had this one job and uh, I was supposed to be emotional and I was approaching just the work wrong. Yeah. And, um, and I'd heard a note from one of the producers to one of my reps said that it was like pulling teeth to get me to be emotional. Uh oh. And yeah. I sat back and I really uh. thought about that. And what I understood was that I wasn't present in the scene. Yep. I was thinking about the action of crying. Right. As opposed right. to if I'm there experiencing this and hearing words coming out of your mouth mm-hmm. and looking you in the eye, right. that should be enough to drum up emotion mm-hmm. that's needed for a breakdown or whatever. Right. And so this idea, this concept of preparing but not planning yeah. is really something that that's I've excellent. kind of embraced lately mm-hmm. because it feels like plans always change totally they always change and if you make a plan and then it goes wrong if you're stuck on that plan where you have to be you're stuck yeah you know and i feel like when the plan changes like in an intimate scene like that that's when the most exciting stuff happens yeah you know like the dynamic can change and you discover something about yourself or about your character's relationship with that other character yeah that then feeds the scene yeah no it really it really does you know like my my uh one of my best friends he says you know my you're you're best when you're loose Mm. You're just like loose mm-hmm, when, mm-hmm. and I, and I I take that as I'm not holding myself so tightly. It's got to be this way. It's got to be this way. Yeah. No, no, no. Be loose. Totally. Be, be relaxed. And when you're loose too, are you? Do you guys shake it up each take? Do you do one take that's a lot heavier than another? Like one um, that's faster, one that's slower. I think you know Mandy and I. We talk a lot. We talk a lot about um, about the scenes that we're about to shoot, and mm-hmm. we we. You know, days in advance, we'll just grab the script and sit and just kind of like go back and forth in a couple scenes and we'll talk about it because mm. I, I want to know, you know, maybe what she'd get hung up on or what right. sticks out to her as like a real point, mm-hmm. you know, an unspoken thing between Jack and Rebecca, aside from just the words that we're, we're saying. Cool. Oh, so cool. we talk about all these things, but um, 
I can't say it enough. Thank God for Mandy Moore. Mm -hmm. You know, and and I always pass it off whenever people talk about how great Jack is. I said, yeah, but it's because of <laughs> of Mandy. It's because of Dan. It's because of mm. you know these people that Jack is alive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that advice about being loose on set is so it's so important, especially with the crying stuff, because sure. Once you get in your own head about, well, I'm supposed to be crying. Oh, I yeah. should be crying. Oh, I can't cry. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to like resort to some manufacturer like way of doing it or something. Yeah. And then it's acting. Yeah. You know? And it's not... work. It's like harder. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, regardless, drumming up emotion for a lot of stuff, mm. um, it's not fun. We we as people don't want to live in dark times. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to live yeah. in heavy moments. I, th I think we look for levity. We look for mm -hmm. humor. We look for light fun you know the light at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. and having to be an actor and be in that headspace of emotion for a day or two or like mandy had for two across two episodes she with had two the, episodes um, fire with the fire but then also with the um funeral yeah with the funeral <laughs> oh, following yeah i can't imagine four, episodes 14 and 15 like i saw i saw my friend mandy moore just for a month just That's just so broken just and when broken. actors live in that long enough you your body feels it yeah it doesn't know that it's play acting no no <laughs> and and that is that is one thing that i think a lot of people never really consider is the um the, the physical strain that emotions take on mm -hmm. us i mean think about mm -hmm. going through a breakup think yeah. about going through a death in the family oh, yeah think about how exhausted you are as a human being when these these things happen yep we as actors we we live with that and we have to find ways of processing that mm -hmm. in our own lives mm -hmm. as well as for the characters because, yeah. you know, to make it real, you have to experience it to some degree. It's so much about acting just to say, I'm realizing, like, is it all about deciding where a character is? Like, how many degrees it is separated from you or how many degrees it could be and deciding where on the scale between, like, just you mm -hmm. playing yourself and a good actor can decide exactly where on that scale to be or something. Yeah, I... I think I think it depends on what the part is. It depends on yeah. what the... What the um, what the show or film mm -hmm. is. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, it's, gosh, I mean, you know, what What I've tried to get back to is, is re like real, real reality, mm -hmm. you know, not playing a, a, a caricature of even myself mm. or, or this imagined idea of who this person is. Um, mm. But I just, I just try to make, these men as real as, as I can. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't think that's really answering the question. No, it absolutely. I mean, it's, I'm, I always am trying to put actors on the spot and try to get them to tell me their like personal philosophy mm -hmm. for how they act. <laughs> and that's, that's as good a philosophy yeah. as any. Well, I, I try and keep things as, as uncomplicated as I can, Yeah. you know, um, create an environment that you're able to be free and open with the character that you're playing. Mm. You know, it's, it's no mystery that I walk around set and I talk to everyone because they're all involved. Hmm. But that puts me at a very comfortable level to be able to do what I need to do as an actor. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, if, if, you know, God bless Ron Bastorf, our, our still photographer on set, if he's in, in my line of sight because hmm. he's trying to get a photograph for the show, if I haven't had like the conversations where this is Ron, my friend, and I can't walk over and say, hey, Ron, can I just have you step up? You're in my eye line, step off to the mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. You know, if I didn't have that camaraderie with gotcha. him or anyone else on the crew, yeah. those moments where I need them. Yeah. And not that I need them to not be there, but or I need them for something like, I don't know, I really lean on the people yeah. that, I'm, that I'm working with. Excellent. Like they fill me up. Because again, it goes back to that experience. The onset experience is for us making the project. Mm -hmm. The byproduct is the show that every, everyone else sees, mm. you know. And the byproduct could be great, but if the experience is shit, well, that sucks. Why yeah. do it? Yeah. So, so you know, having a a working environment, creating an environment that you're able to do your best work is important. Mm. Yeah. You know, and and. Sometimes that's you got to create it within yourself. How you so? Know? Well, let's say you're having a bad day, and you're not supposed to be yeah, having a bad okay. day. Mm -hmm. um, your character's having a great day. Yeah, your character's having a great day. Right. Or vice versa. Sure. You're having a great day. Your character's supposed to have a bad day. Yeah. You know, it goes both ways. Yeah. You have to create that environment in yourself where you're free <laughs> to to live this experience of the character. 
you know, and I think, you know, a lot of it for me, what I've found is, is the camaraderie I have with the people I, I make a project with. Yeah. So my, you know, first there's yourself. You got to make sure you're, you're right and you're there cool. and you're open and you're giving. You then can't forget about that. Never. Of it, no, right? no, because it starts with you, mm. you know, as it should with everyone else individually. You know, yeah. if I, if I start my day and say, it's going to be a great day, I'm going to be positive. I'm going to listen, mm. you know, it's the, these are affirmations I think we need to remind ourselves of mm -hmm. and going into scene work, especially, I mean, you know, if you're not present, you're not there, then you're not giving to the scene. You're not contributing. You're not there for your fellow actor. Right. You know, so then it's, it's, it's that it's, I'm giving everything I can to my scene partners. Mm -hmm. Like I, in, in the same conversation with, with Logan, my mm -hmm. teenage, <laughs> my teenage son, <laughs> um, you know, teenage who plays teenage Kevin, I said to him, I said, kid, all I'm doing, I'm there to make you better than me. I'm there mm -hmm. to make you a better actor than me. I said, and the only reason maybe is because like, I've been here for 22 years, so I got perspective, but I want you and everyone else to be just, just amazing and so every time i'm fighting for another take or finding some nuance or like even like giving like a little a little insight or direction like hey try this yeah because i want them to be better yeah i want them to be better than me and i'm busting my ass every right. single take yeah you know so i think there's you start with yourself and then you then you move to your scene partners yep. how can i be there supporting my scene partner how can i give to them and also in a way, inspire them to give to me mm -hmm. because there's reciprocity. Absolutely. There's some actors you'll come across that just, they don't, they're there for themselves. Yeah. You they know? don't get past that first step. They don't get past that first step. Yeah. You know? And I mean, I, I oftentimes feel like my best acting is when the camera's on my back right. and it's on the other person because I know then I'm just there experiencing what I need to for them. That's awesome. Yeah. You know? And then, and then it's the environment you create right. with your crew. You know, totally. making sure that you're kind to them and respectful of them and, yeah. and, and you recognize the talent and the hard work that they have, yeah. you know, and then extending it beyond that when you're out in the world. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Can't forget about that. This is pr primo acting advice. <laughs> you just gave like a how to on like how to be a great actor on a TV set. Yeah, you awesome. know what? I mean, I'll say this. I, I was very fortunate. My very first job um as an actor mm -hmm. um, in the industry really in the industry was on the fresh prince of bel-air yes indeed I and saw i that. saw and I, <laughs> I think i've talked about this before but it's also worth mentioning again will smith was the coolest guy uh -huh. the nicest man very very kind to his crew mm -hmm. i was mm -hmm. a kid who had one line on his show yeah and here he was having a, a full-on conversation asking about me and whatnot and i just thought wow man he's really yes. nice okay how great is that and then i saw the way like i said he treated his crew his cast mm -hmm. everything he had grace mm -hmm. and that settled into where i'm thinking to myself wow will smith who's got his own tv show and, and arguably one of the biggest movie stars back in 1995 because totally. of men in black and all those and he was really on his rise mm. he's a good man yeah. And I was like, God, man. I said, <laughs> I want to be like him. There you go. Yeah. And so that was that was my send off into the world was seeing someone in that position being good and yeah. being kind as well as being talented. Right. And so for me, I thought that's how I want to be when it's my set. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to be good. I want to be kind in addition to being talented. That's I hope. going to inspire people. I mean, he took yeah. the time out of the day to inspire you. Yeah, totally. And he sounds like he really set the tone for your whole career yeah, philosophy. He did. Yeah. He did. That's so amazing. You just, it's all about passing it on. And here you are passing it on yeah. again. And the thing is, and you, you never know, you never know what kind of impact you're going to make on someone. And, you know, this, mm -hmm. this is something that's interesting about, let's just say how successful the show is, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure Mandy and Chrissy and Sterling and Justin and, and all of us kind of that can't take off our character masks and we walk around wearing these faces of right. this character, mm -hmm. of these characters we play. But there are a lot of people that will approach us or me in general. And I have to remember, and you always have to remember that, you know, this person's being brave to come up and talk to you. Yes. But also, you know, I'm impacting their day. Mm -hmm. I'm impacting how they move forward, mm. you know? And, and it doesn't always have to be about, hey, Milo, you know, I'm a fan of your work. Hey, Milo, can I have a photograph? Hey, Milo, you know, anything. Sometimes it's just an interaction, yeah. being human. Yeah. People forget to be human. 
Yeah. You know? That's, again, the getting in your own way. Yeah. Yeah. Can yeah, interfere with other people's days, other people's lives. Yeah, totally. Yeah, no, it does. It does. But I think I think people just need to remember. I mean, actors and artists in particular need to remember: don't shut anything out, mm. don't shut anything down. Mm-hmm. Experience, mm-hmm. understand, listen. You know, be present. You know, stuff like that. I think are 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 the the fundamentals to being a good actor. And also, you know, acting shouldn't be your one source of happiness or satisfaction. Mm -hmm. It's a job. Mm. It is a job. But like, for me, personally, damn, I love my job. Yeah. I really do. In the Envelope and Awards podcast is recorded at Lotus Productions, Hyperbolic Audio, and Big Yellow Duck in New York City, and Soundbox LA, Mark Grau Studios, and Buzzies in Los Angeles. Like, rate, subscribe, tell your friends, and follow us on Twitter at In The Envelope. Thanks, as always, to producer, editor, and all-around podcast extraordinaire, Jamie Muffet, and thank you to the team at Backstage the most trusted name in casting. That's Peter Rappaport, Rowan al Francis Ramos, Caitlin Watkins, Lauren Rout, Mark Stinson, and especially Casey Howe. For more awards and industry coverage, head over to Backstage.com. Thank you for listening. Tune in next time for another glimpse in the envelope. So such a like fun Good. conversation though. Like I d- Ellen so- is a really tough act to follow. So uh, <laughs> this was so much more fun than Ellen. Ah! I'm not saying that. Like, come on. <laughs>